All right, this is another example of an album that came out of nowhere for me and just, ah, just blew me away. I love when albums do this, and it's one of the main reasons why I continue to do what I do. You know, I'm always keeping my eyes out for the next big sound, the next tasty treat. So, yeah, let's dive into this one. It's here, but I have no name for it, by Sleep Makes Waves, and that's all one word, kind of like I am the morning. So, yeah, Sleep Makes Waves is a new one for me. You know, these guys kind of came out of nowhere, and they've been fairly prolific since I think their first one of 2012's Today, uh, In Today Already Walks Tomorrow. Um, and looking on their bio, it looks like they were originally a side project of Snowdroppers with uh, Jeremy Davison, Triple J, DJ Dom uh, Alessio, uh, and then guitarist Jonathan Kaur, um, and then bringing in the talents of Alex Wilson on bass, Tom Biner on guitars, and William Smith on drums. And originally it was formed, I think, in 2006 or so, uh, as like this new form of post-rock. And I love post-rock. It's one of my favorite subgenres of rock music. And, you know, it was... In the mid 2000s, like mid to late 2000s, it was my kind of go to music genre of choice with bands like Mogwai, Explosions in the Sky, and then getting into like the really weird and very experimental post rocks with Swans and uh, Godspeed and, uh, you know, those more sound and ambient and experimental post rock stuff. And I feel as if this one takes another kind of a sidestep, because when I think about post-rock, you know, obviously you're thinking about longer instrumentals, lots of really interesting passages, uh, kind of using that style of music, but more in an atmospheric side of things. And that's always kind of been my defining feature of post-rock is that, you know, the structures might not necessarily be there, but it's the vibes, it's the atmosphere, it's the overall environment at which they're playing in and i feel as if um sleep makes waves does something a little bit different here that i really appreciate and at first like my first handful of listens with this record i was even starting to think like could i qualify this as post-rock because it's definitely taking more of that rocker aspect it's there's a lot more tangibility in this record that weren't found in those other records and those other bands that i've mentioned but what really brings it back to that post-rock core is that playing with sound playing with environments and still being like this vibe check of music and that was what kind of it's like circling right it's tethered to the core of post-rock while it's circling all these different landscapes and more of like this i don't want to say like hardcore aspects but there's a lot more of a rocker tinge to it you know uh and one thing that kept coming back for this one is how catchy and how memorable so many of these suites are like the album opens up beautifully with All Hail Skull and it opens up with this dirge of a meaty synthesizer lick, you know, and I wouldn't be surprised if this is just like a very manipulated guitar lick as well, but it definitely feels like that synth that just one person is holding down the one note that has all these key features kind of played around it. And then it blossoms into a very heavy, very gnarly, like, guitar layout. But it's when we get into, I guess, the closest that we get to, like, a chorus on this work where it's got that that tangibility, like, this immediate forethought within it. You know, it's like I recognize exactly what they're putting down in this case, and I... Like, I, I can hum along to this. I only need, like, one or two listens before I'm getting excited and getting really, like, I'm looking forward to these buildups and payoffs. And, again, that was something that, as a progressive rock lover such as myself, I'm really excited for. I want to hear those buildups and payoffs. I want to hear those crescendos. And All Hail Skull does a great job of starting us off. And I think the best track to exemplify what it is that I love about this album is the fourth track of Black Paradise, where it starts off very somber. And this is probably the most classical of the post-rock sounds. You know, this is something that I would hear off of, like, all of a sudden I miss everybody from Explosions in the Sky. You know, you've got those harmonizing guitars, the very quick paced note sequences, uh, and you've got these string overlays. And again, you start off and it's very somber, very mellow. But then when you get into the 
meat and potatoes, when you get into like the mid portion of this track, it just blossoms. You know, like it's almost as if this bulb of a flower has been stain closed and then it just slowly opens up and you're just like, that is what I love about post-rock. That is what I love about this particular style of music. And you don't need this big bombastive, again, I'm using words that I've made up, bim -bom, big bombastive soundscapes to provide this moving and emotional music that I just, I can't help but love. And again, if we want to talk about big buildups and payoffs, look no further than the title track, the eight, seventh track, and the longest track. And again, that was where I was like really excited. I saw a track that was like eight and a half minutes on the runtime. I'm like, okay, here we go. I'm excited for something really good. And once again, we have a lot of time devoted to the atmosphere, to the foundation of this track, to allow it to build itself up so that when you get into the latter half of this track and it's more in towards the ending, you have those brilliant payoffs. You have the time invested, you know, sowing of the seeds to reap in the latter half of the track that is just so much more rewarding because you spent that time building the track up and providing something very fun. Now, I did skip over quite a number of tracks, so let's go back and talk about those. The second and third tracks, Super Realm Park and Ritual Control, the second and third track. These two guys really showcase what sets Sleep Makes Waves apart from a lot of the other post-rock bands in that both of them are much more energetic. There's a lot more, like oomph to it. There's a lot more power behind it. And this was something that I feel is very unique to the post-rock movement. As I mentioned, and I keep mentioning, post-rock to me is much more somber. It's a lot more about mood and atmosphere and slowly and gradually building up the track into this explosion cacophony of sound. Both of these tracks start off very hard and then play around with that tempo uh, to see what they can divulge within that time sequence. And a lot of this has to do with the atmosphere that they're putting down and playing with that are kind of weaving themselves within this more hard hitting, harsher style of music. When you compare it to the rest of the post rock, like it, it never really gets to the point of like being metal, but it's definitely, you know, making eyes with metal from across the bar, if that makes any sense. And then the fifth track of Virgigius that uh, follows up the Black Paradise, um, it is such a beast of a track. You know, I'm getting flavors of a lot of the like the genesis of the post rock stuff, like from Vangelis and a lot of the new wave stuff from like the 70s and 80s. It, it has that dripping sequence of sounds. You know, it's stuff that I love from Tangerine Dream and some of the other kraut rock stuff that came out at the time, like Craftworks um, and whatnot. But it's that that overlay of sound. Like this is something that Mogwai would definitely be playing with you know and I absolutely love the textures and the atmosphere and the ambience and I am kind of glad that this is the shortest track at three and a half minutes because it just gives you that taste to then allow it to send off again and yeah it's it's the perfect kind of like midway point within this album and I'm glad that they spent this interlude providing some really rich and deep textures. And then the final two tracks I'm going to talk about, Terror Future, uh, the sixth track, and then the closing piece of This Close Forever. Terror Future, and, like both of these tracks, do a great job of continuing the ideas, continuing the motifs, uh, again, starting off in a very somber place that then gets blown up and then kind of played with a little bit more. And again, it's that catchiness. It's these themes and these ideas that come into the fold that just... Uh, they get stuck in my head, like especially, especially that last track of this close forever. Ah, uh, like it leaves on such a high note. Uh, the the music is so crystal clear. The atmosphere and the vibes are so good. They're so, like the only thing I can think of is like they're so green. You know, like they have this color of green around them, and I don't know if that makes any sense outside of myself. And I just I love that like the moment that this close forever. And I want to go right back to the beginning of All Hail Skull because it's just like immediate. It's like, I need more. I want more. So yeah, in the end, this album has been knocking me out. I've been loving to put this on and really getting deep into the music. Like this is my favorite style of like listening to music, you know, because each time I listen to it, something else gets brought forward like some new nook or cranny is presented to me and i'm like i didn't realize that this thing was going off on the background or i didn't realize that this thing was being played with over here or i didn't realize that this was going on within the interlays of sound 
You know, this was the kind of music that I was praying and hoping that music would become in the future. And that each time I listened to it, it shifted, it changed, and it was always exciting. So I have a feeling that this album is going to mature and grow with me as I continue on within this year. And yeah, this is an album that every time I put it on, I get excited for. So yeah, let's just say it. Let's just call it. It's here, but I have no name for it by Sleep Makes Waves is one that I absolutely love with my whole heart. To me, this is one of the best albums that have been released this year. I feel as if this one's going to be like really close to the top of the mountain when I do my end of the year list, and I'm really excited to see how it's going to hold up. This is one to run, don't walk for. This gets the new seal of approval, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I went over onto Bandcamp and immediately purchased this record because even though I made a video a couple weeks ago saying that records are too expensive and I can only afford you know the really special albums, this is the kind of record that I save my money for. So. Yeah, top praise. This is the top shelf album. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. So yeah, that's what I've got for It's Here, but I have no name for it from Sleep Makes Waves. What did you guys think about this album? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whatever you thought, please let me know by commenting down below. That's what I've got for you guys today. So thank you all so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.